Hello IB students, I feel this video might be quite useful for you to indicate some of the most serious mistakes that students can make in Paper 1 for you to avoid completely. Uh, poor structure is often right at the heart of problems. 10 markers are normally quite easy to structure, but 15 markers in particular are often structured poorly and a key criteria in the top level of 15 markers in terms of the marks you can get requires good organisation and logical structure. So if you mess that up, you immediately cannot hit the top marks for a 15 marker. So following my videos on 15 marker structure will be very helpful to overcome those potential issues. Time management is often an issue. You see a lot of rushing or not enough time left for a judgement. Um, and basically panic sets in and that really does hinder your potential of scoring good marks in paper one. So follow my time guidance and practice to overcome potential time management issues. You don't know it's going to be a problem until you experience it yourself. You've got to put yourself under pressure and feel the time pressure for you to understand how you're going to perform under such conditions. I've also said in brackets the ineffective use of reading time. In uh, the actual exam, there's five minutes of reading time. As I said in my uh, paper one basic exam structure video, the use of that reading time is super important. And if you don't use it well, chances are you're going to struggle in the real exam, all right? Uh, a lack of or ineffective use of examples, I've mentioned that very clearly in the videos up until this point. IB examiners, it's, a, it's probably their most common criticism, it's their most common complaint actually, that there is a genuine lack of examples all the time in paper one, where you've got to come up with the examples yourself. It's amazing how students just ignore it completely, or they lump examples on at the end of their essays, you know, just assuming that that will be enough. You know, they know they need to put examples in, they just throw them in right at the end without really linking them to anything, assuming that's going to score the marks. No. no. Effective use of examples means using them throughout to back up all the points you're making, whether it's on the one hand or on the other hand, or in anything you're saying in a 10 mark question, apply. If you're drawing diagrams, apply. They want examples to be used regularly throughout the essay. It's probably the biggest complaint, actually, of IB examples. Number four is a big problem if you do it. Now, good students won't. Good teachers will tell students not to do this. And that is the lack of referring to diagrams. A lot of students are very good at drawing diagrams, understanding diagrams, but then they take liberties in their writing. They assume that examiners know everything about the diagram, why you've shifted curves, why the price has changed or the price level has changed, why quantity has changed or real GDP has changed. So many assumptions are made of examiners, and like I've said in previous videos, your mindset should be to assume the examiner knows nothing about economics. That will force you to explain everything you've drawn in writing. So important to refer to your diagrams in your writing. Um, weak or incomplete judgments, this often comes because of poor time management or because students don't understand the value of a really good judgment. Remember, a judgment is for 15 markers only. So important for you to hit kind of 11 and above in your 50 marker. Yeah. That is a real issue, real issue, and you've got to be careful that you are not the student that does a weak judgment or a poor judgment or runs out of time. Plan well, watch my videos and understand how to do good judgments. Just a general lack of depth. I made a video of how to write in good depth in economics. Make sure you've watched that to understand what you need to do, what the examiner expects from you. The worst thing in your exam is to have TV next to it, which means too vague. It's the worst thing to have. It means the examiner is not sure that you understand your economics. So a lack of depth is going to dig holes in the ground for you. It's going to limit the kind of marks you can score. And a lack of good analysis or lack of good depth, you're not going to score more than half marks. So these are very, very common mistakes. Um, you need to make sure you avoid them. Knowing what they are is, is important. Good economists watching all these videos will not fall into these traps. You're a good economist. You'll avoid them now. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Easy.